Help presents Stress-Free Living with Ray Savage and Mr. Stress-Free, Ratanjit S. Sandhi. This audio program is an unscripted and unrehearsed conversation between Ray and Ratanjit. It is shared with you in hope of adding value to your life. We encourage you to listen to this program in its entirety to receive the full impact of its message. Sit back, relax, open your heart, mind, and soul to this edition of Stress-Free Living. Welcome to Stress-Free Living. Thank you so much for being with us here today. I'm Ray Samich, and I'd love to introduce all of you to my longtime radio colleague, co-host, and my dear spiritual brother, Ratanjit Sandhi. Ratanjit, how are you today? Wonderful, wonderful, Ray. How are you? Excellent, thank you. And very much intrigued by today's topic that I really want to dive into. You know, Ratanjit, over the... uh, 28 years that we have been doing this program, one of the biggest things that people ask me about is, that makes sense. I I really kind of buy that. I I understand what you're saying, but how do I do it? How do I do it? And so today I'm hoping that we can really lay out a how-to plan for the topic. And the topic that we're bringing to the table today is basically how to live in the moment. You know, we are in, in if people are listening and watching this show in real time because we have so many people that watch and, and catch our shows on a replay. We have our Stress-Free Living YouTube channel and please check those out over there. Hundreds of shows that are out there at our Stress-Free Living radio channel on YouTube, just Google that. But if you are catching it live, we are approaching a new year. And everybody is talking about how I can make improvements in my life. How, what did I do this year compared to last year? What am I going to do next year compared to the year ahead? Everybody is talking big picture about the new year, 365 days, 366, because that's a leap year. Can we live in the moment for a whole year? Can we build a meaningful block of moments, a meaningful year of moments that can give us the best year ever? And and how do we go about doing that? How do we take just one new moment of the time to add the highest value, to create the best new year possible the reality is that it's not possible to live anywhere else but in the moment we are all living in the moment it is our mind which wanders around we have to bring our mind in the moment everything is in the moment Right? Can you it's, go no, back? No, it's true. No, we are. No, we are. We do live where we're where we are. You're exactly right. Yeah. So we we are not realizing the reality of where we are. So because uh, we are living either in the past, what this happened yesterday, this guy should have said this to me, but he didn't, or I should have said this to to her, I didn't, and and so on and so forth. We are constantly uh, living in the past, or somebody gave you a trophy or medal, and suddenly you are awarded, so you are living in that moment of, of past. Your mind, your awareness, your conscience, your all these things have to be in the reality of on the moment. It is only in the present time that we we do anything. Can we do something yesterday, today? Impossible, because that is gone. That is history. It it 
you, you, your past is history and your fu future is a dream. It is only by operating in the present that we are we have any chance of making history and living fulfilling our dreams. So obviously when you say it those way in those words, it, it's very powerful and you say, yes, you're right. My body's in this in the moment. So my brain needs to be with me too. But we don't do that. Why don't we do that? Why? I mean, that's so logical when you hear it spoken that way. It's it makes so much sense. It makes it makes sense that not only is that reality, but it also is the smart reality. It's I, to grasp everything that I can where my body is, my mind should be there too. So if it's so obvious and it's so, you know, makes so much sense, why do we not do that? Why do we spend time reflecting on either the good things or the, or the bad things of the past that we can't change? Why do we spend so much time worrying about what the future is going to bring that we really can't control as anywhere near to the degree that we want to, that we expect to? This is like a just a fundamental human being question. Why do humans act this way if that's if it doesn't have any value to live in the past or the future, but it has amazing value to live in the moment? Why don't we do it? Well, basically, we are again repeating ourselves, we are all so much used to living in fear, greed and ego that these these things somehow other if, if if tomorrow something is going to happen to you you are living in the fear of that tomorrow you know somebody says you are going to have an amazing uh, uh, worse weather you you are going to have tornadoes you are going to have this and this so you're going to suddenly live in the fear. But if you live in the present, you can do something about it. You can you can pretend, you can you cannot stop it. The information of the future given to us in the present is to do something about that instance. So basically, once we get rid of our fear or greed or ego or jealousy or lust or all, all these things which are associated with our five senses of the human body we will be able to live in the in the present <clears throat> now the main thing in our life is that we have not learned the basic law of acceptance we do not you know everything is given to us when you are playing cards you don't do not dictate the cards you want the best player plays with the cards they are dealt with and Normal player constantly complains the card. Oh, I don't have the good card. You, have, you always give me the bad cards. So the game is really the unknown element of the cards we are dealt Similarly, a best player plays. You know, in the, on, on the basketball court, if you if you are the best player. You have to play within the rule of the game. You, you cannot change the rules because you will have the foul. And whoever can play within the rule of the game means acceptance of the rules wins. 
So we have to learn to accept the condition we are placed under. And that those are the cards we are dealt with. Now, our attempt, our creative mind is gifted to us to figure it out. How do you handle the situation? What, how do you add the highest value to all concern? So again, when your motive is only to benefit you, what is in it for you, for me, even the acceptance doesn't work. Acceptance only works when you gratefully, unconditionally accept the condition you are dealt with. And now your mission of life from moment to moment remains the same. To add the highest value to the all, to the universe, to the everyone concern, including the environment. When you, when you focus on adding the highest value and all the conditions we are dealt with is accepted by with gratitude, you automatically remain, rem, uh, move into the present. I want to ask you some questions about this acceptance idea. If we're talking about living in the moment, are you saying we need to accept where we are in the moment? Or we have to accept where the past, what happened in the past, and what took us to this moment? Or, or are you talking about we have to accept the fact that we can't change the future? The, the, the acceptance is such a strong concept. And the moment is, is swift, it's fleeting. What are we accepting? In, in to be able to fulfill what we're talking about here are we are we accepting everything is is that even possible in a split moment to accept you know no matter what happened in the past i i i did terrible things people did terrible things to me uh, you know i had the worst luck in the world i just came through a catastrophe i have to accept that in the moment forget it and then i have to accept now that i need to live in the present and I have to accept now that that there's a lot of things that are just like hanging over my head that could happen tomorrow, but I have to not worry about those. I have to just accept. I mean, acceptance <laughs> in the moment is it seems like it's a pretty big thing to do. Is that is that what you're talking? I mean, just no matter what it is, past, present, future, I have to just just disregard it. You know, what comes first is a very important question. So before acceptance, you have to create a mindset of unconditional gratefulness. Supposing you are so utterly grateful and un under that condition, somebody comes and uh, says, hey, you are an idiot, you are this and you are that because you are, your mind is so much positive, even that doesn't affect you. So until you understand the wisdom of unconditional acceptance and unconditional gratefulness and unconditional acceptance would not happen. The biggest hurdle for that is our expectations and our attachments. And our ego, those things come in the way. And those are ingrained in us. We are basically, those are inculcated habits in us. Everything is looked from, if something happens to us, if it's, it's, 
beyond our expectation, we are happy or unhappy because this is not what I expected. We, we, so we in acceptance mode, your mind is part in what is, this is what I want. Whereas our life is run by the, the condition, what I want to give. How do I want to add value? So you are adding value. Given the condition you are in, so you have to assess and accept the condition you are in, and you are now assembling these things with the creativity of your brain to add the highest value. So these these so things introduced, you, these you've introduced things will a few not be ones. understood if we are trying to understand part in our ego, greed, and fear. So when we are looking at these, when we are totally ingrained in fear, greed, and ego, this unconditional gratefulness will not make sense to you. Unconditional acceptance will not make sense to you. Not having expectation would not make sense to you. And attachment, having not no attachment will not make sense to you. So this is when we are fighting, we are trying to understand something with, you know, imagine if you had a, 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 a bad taste in your mouth because of the condition you are, you had fever or you had condition and everything tastes bad. Now you are going to find the defect in the, in the, in the things rather than in your mouth. Because these things, when I, when I say, don't make sense to you. It's like they don't taste right to me because we had the fever. We have the health condition, which is distorting our vision or taste because I have ego, I have fear, I have greed, I have expectations, I have attachments. All those things are there with me. So when I say these things, our ego immediately comes out and says, no, no, Ratanjit, you are saying that. You are insulting me because of her ego. So okay. in our first segment here, we have thrown out a whole lot of different ideas, Ratanjit. You have done that. You, you, you've thrown out the idea of, of overcoming our fear, ego, and greed, being in a state of gratefulness, controlling our expectations, forcing us to be in an acceptance mode. We promised at the beginning of the program that this would be a how-to show, and that's still my goal here today. So we're going to, when we come back in just a moment, we're going to start sorting this out so that we can see a logical flow of how to overcome all of the different things that Ratanjit has been presenting here and be able to lead us to a point where we can truly live in a moment that will allow us to build a whole year of amazing moments for everybody. This is Stress-Free Living. We'll be back in just a moment. All right, we have a very short 90 seconds. Welcome to some of our new guests that have just joined us. And if you have a please quick uh, few thoughts you'd like to share with us, please do that now. I have a quick comment that uh, this moment is really special. For us, the show, excuse me, because it is Bhai Saab's birthday. So, Bhai Saab, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank oh, you. my God. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank, so, you, uh, thank, you, thank you. Oh, happy birthday. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, yeah, we're so talking, talking about, about the, the present, present days. days in, uh, I, I just have a quick comment, Ray, that I think you're asking a really good question about how, how how is this even possible? Why? Uh, this is not, uh, the way I see, heard it, it's not easy. I mean, easy has left the station. The, the price is really big. <laughs> so 
if, if you want to be on the easy train, this prize is not going to happen. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? We have a few seconds. Quick thought or a question you want me to ask? Well, the, I think the, the number one realization that we, you know, we need to achieve, and it's very difficult to obviously, is that we have very limited control on our existence. And I think that's like the ego comes in the way. We feel that way. We are powerful. We are capable. We can do this. We can do that. And a lot of people would say that. that so are you telling me that everything is due to preordained fate? And I have come to believe that it is. Yeah. And, you know, and the only example you can think of is like, you know, we are creating artificial intelligence now. You know, that that entity only does what we program them to do. So that will be a good parallel. We are back on Stress-Free Living. Ray Samich with you and Ratanjit Sandhi talking about living in the moment. How, how can we do that? And we had some great conversations. We do that uh, during our breaks on our program with our Zoom audience. If you'd like to be a part of this audience, check out our YouTube Stress-Free Living radio channel. And you will see in there, we share the Zoom link and you're able to join with our conversation and you can ask your questions and give us your comments and feedback right during the show. And especially afterwards, we stick around with you and kind of have a show after the show, which is always very enjoyable. Ratanji, one of the thoughts that was expressed is that what we're talking about here today isn't easy. You know, it seems very complicated. You, you had just laid out a whole bunch of different thoughts and concerns that we want to talk about, and we will. But I, I said we're going to do a how-to. If if anybody is thinking that it's easy to live in the moment and that it's easy to change the way we always have operated in a mode of fear, ego, and greed, I, I guess we have to come to the reality that says that in in the world that we live in, being bombarded by all kinds of messaging that says it is about us. We're supposed to live for our happiness. We are we are supposed to have more and want more and we deserve more. We're entitled to more. We are kind of competing with a whole world and, and trillions of dollars that are saying what you're saying isn't right. You know, actually, it is very easy, Ray. It's not difficult at all. All we need to do is fire the current boss and hire a new boss. Current boss is, you know, our computer, which is our brain, is direct by our five senses, which is our current boss. Five senses come from this human body mode. Human body forever knows that it is going to die, it is going to be, it is part in fear, it is thinks itself to be a separate entity, it is uh, basically contaminated, guided by ego, and it needs food, it needs things, and it is part in greed and jealousy and lust and all these things. So if your brain, your amazingly creative instrument brain is guided by these, these directives, fear, greed, ego, insecurity, lust, and all these things which are imposed upon by the human body. So who else we can give this brain to be for the guidance? The force which is enlivening the human body is free of fear, greed, ego, and all these contamination. And once we somehow change our habit of living in the body mode and change the habit of living in the oneness mode, in the divine mode, 
the brain would automatically operate in the present. Now, instead of forcing ourselves to be, to be in the present is a consequence of being operated by uh, the divine mode in the, the divine force which in, is enlivening in that mode. So how do we convert, how do we generate that habit of operating in the oneness mode? That is the question. Ray, if I make any sense to you? Well, it, it makes a lot of sense. You, you've, as you always do so well, you, you've totally thrown us onto a, onto a new branch of this tree that I didn't think we were going to go down because I was coming back to talk about all the different things you already brought up and you brought up something else, but that's okay. Cause it's, that's what, <laughs> that's how we do it. The, the idea that you said just now that living in the moment is a consequence, an automatic consequence of having the divine force control us allowing the divine force within us to to be our ceo that if that is true and and i say if not to doubt you but just to say that that's so powerful that i have to think about it as not being possible because that changes everything so i have to say if if that's possible then it, it solves all the other problems. Everything else that you had brought up in the first segment goes away if, if that alone is a consequence, if doing that alone allows the consequence to be living in the moment, then nothing else matters. Then acceptance falls in place, gratefulness falls in place, You know, uh, not having expectations, is no longer a problem. All those other topics that I thought we were going to talk about don't even matter anymore because they don't exist if we are living in the present mode. So yes, you're absolutely right. How do we how do we do that? That's something that we've been talking about for years on this program. When we are taught at the earliest age that we're a body and that our body is going to grow and it's going to grow old and it's going to eventually become dust back in the earth. That is a, that's a model that we accept as reality. People die all around us. Loved ones die. And we know that that's our fate as well. So you can see how that's a very controlling part of our existence. And, and it's very understandable how that affects everything we do, knowing that we're limited in that way. So how do we talk ourselves into, talk our minds into, talk our souls into understanding that that's not relevant? How do we do that? You know, basically, you have to understand this phenomena of life. <clears throat> we, all our life, have been identifying ourselves with this human body. My fingerprint is my identity. My eyes are different. My face impression is different. You know, your iPhone, to instead of having the, uh, the uh, code number, or uh, you have face or your thumb yeah. imprint to right. open that. So we, we are identified by these things. So when we, when we, when we comprehend that this human body is basically a space suit to operate on this earth while we are here. So I'm not the human body. And what 
brings life in this human body is the divine force which is present. So I'm not the divine force. I'm not, I'm basically an awareness of the divine force present in the human body. So once you understand this, presence of the divine force within this human body, giving it life, is gives you unconditional gratefulness because you are very grateful for the divine force to be present. Otherwise, you are dead. So instead of thinking that I am the divine force, I am basically an awareness of the fact that this human body is a gift to me and it is enlivened and it is in working condition because of the presence of the divine power in it. So the unconditional gratefulness comes from const constantly reminding and being aware of this fact that this divine force is present in us. So every morning when you go, I get up and go in the in the in front of a mirror, you see in your eyes, you see the life present in this human body, and you see the divine force present in the human body, and you bow to it. You are express your utter gratefulness to the presence of that divine force within this human body. So once that habit, that awareness exists within you, every moment of your life, the moment that awareness goes away, you are back in the body mode. When that awareness is present in you and you are aware of that utter gratefulness because of this presence of the divine force in you, you are already in the, in the present mode. So you have to cultivate this habit of constantly noticing and constantly being aware of the presence of the divine force in you. Right. So I can see very clearly how doing that changes me to understand that there is something amazingly powerful within me that is causing me to even exist and is empowering me to do things far greater than I could ever do them just within the limits of my human body. And also the overcoming the, the massive fear and concern that I will just become dust and I'll be done at some point. And I don't know when that is. And, and part of the fear is not knowing when that is. Is it when I'm 10 or 20 or 60 or 80 or 100? We don't know. So every day we just kind of have a little thought that says, when's that going to be? Is it today? So all of that is eliminated by what you said. I can, you know, I mean, that's just overwhelmingly powerful and, and life-changing, certainly. I don't quite understand how that changes though my my physical body's plan forward or my mental capacity forward because don't i still have an obligation with this body with this brain with the personality that i have been given with the the skills that i've been given don't i still have an obligation to do great things to, to do what I was destined to do. 
I mean, where does kind of fate fall into that? Do, do I do I just give in to the fact that there's a power within me that is in charge and let fate take over? No, look at this new reality, Ray. Once you are parked in this awareness of divine force present in this human body, you automatically notice another human body or other bodies, other life, livelihood and other environmentally things and begin to realize that everything is because of the divine force. Now, so far you have lived a life to take care of yourself or your loved one people you think are mine, right? Now, yes. this new reality doesn't leave anyone as stranger, doesn't leave anyone as enemy or friend. So you see nothing but divinity coming to you, talking to you, you automatically have an inner desire to do something for them, to add value to them. So what you can do to make a difference to this surrounding, to this world where the divine force exists in every aspect of, of life. So your mission of life is to add value under every circumstance. So now imagine a person who continuously focuses on not what is for me, but adding the highest value. Nothing but success would be around that person. Because success comes from adding the highest value in whatever you do. Obviously, we are designed uniquely by this, this human habits or human being, nature has never duplicated anything. Even the leaf on the same tree is different, size different. So that is why each human being had, has a different fingerprint. So we are unique. We are equally unique. So we have to find what special uniqueness which I have in this in this life and you use utilizing that uniqueness, I would add higher value. What's the difference? There have been very successful individuals who have added great value to other people and become, immensely successful, whether it's financial or fame or or power or whatever it is, without being in that without being in that in that spiritual mode, without having that awareness of the fact that there's a divine force within them, but they have gone on to be extremely successful. What's the difference between that and what you just described? How, how how is that a different factor when you can do that in the human mode versus doing it with the rec recognition that there's a divine force within us? When you do it for what's in it for me and get trophies and medals and money and fame. So when, you know, you, when that fame or money is, for some reason stops stop coming to you there are many famous people they when they are not nobody cares for them anymore they go into depression similarly if a billionaire for some reason or other makes a mistake financially and loses the money they go into depression but anyways, even if they are remain successful, of course, they, by adding value, they are successful. 
their joy and pleasure is only looking at the success. Success. They become habituated in living in a great house or having success around driving a great car no longer gives them that immense happiness. But when you unconditionally add value to the divine force, the joy within you is constant. You are adding the highest value. It constantly coming out of your gratefulness, coming out of your desire to add value. You are constantly adding value. And as you are growing, going old and your capacities are different, you are constantly looking for new ways to add values because you are basically addicted to adding value because that gives you joy and pleasure, real inner joy. And that is the main difference. And eventually, you are doing it for experiencing that unconditional joy within you. You are not doing for pleasing somebody or getting awards or trophies or medals. And it's, it's a totally different mindset. This is a kind of a human being who becomes a highest value adding entity rather than performing the role of adding value. There's a major difference when you add the highest value and you become an entity, anything you do ends up adding the highest value because you have become that entity, basically value adding entity, which is not looking for trophies, medal, or recognition, right? We have one more segment. We, I think we're making progress here, and I, I hope our audience is, is capturing that as well. I still, still have a couple questions, and we're going to come back and, and talk about destiny or fate. I, I would like to know your opinion on how relevant those are, how much of an impact those do have with everything else that you've talked about. And also, the show is called Stress-Free Living. Does this reduce our stress to, to have this responsibility on us in, in this mode to have to change the world because of the divine force within us and, and the immense abilities that were uniquely given to us? Does that actually add to our stress? Or or can we cope with that and, and use that in the right way to have a stress-free life? Two of the questions, and maybe some more, will be coming our way. Please stay with us. This is Stress Free Living. All right, everybody. Open up. Give us your thoughts. I, I just felt, listening to this, uh, especially the last exchange, I think uh, the one of the things that I uh, got out of it is to remember that this is hard stuff. This is not taking a pill and your headache goes away. Uh, and and in, uh, in Sanskrit, it's called abhyas, means constant repetition. So it's, it's like a child is told to solve a quadratic equation and he's not going to be able to solve it, but he can go to school and first, second, third, high school, etc., and various teachers, and you, he can solve a quadratic equation. So I think that this idea of living in the moment uh, is is really powerful, but I think we have to accept that it, it might take some time, it might take some uh, commitment. And the hard part is we have to do this ourselves. You know, there is no math teacher who is going to teach us how to solve this equation. This is something we have to do. That's That's what I am getting. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a quick thought you'd like to share or a question you want me to ask Ratanji in the next segment? I just wanted to add real quick. I agree with uh, what was just said, uh, but you know, I think there there is a math teacher in at least in in uh, 
you know, culture of ancient India, there is a whole tradition of having gurus. And that is the idea behind it. Because, you know, there is belief that without a guru, you actually cannot achieve what we're talking about here. And so that's what they do. They teach you to realize the ultimate fact, the theory of everything. That was coined by, by, by the way, by Stephen Hawkins. Um, and so, you know, in, in the West, we don't. We are back on Stress-Free Living. Ratan Jisadi and yours truly, Ray Samish, with you. We have such uh, tremendous conversations with our Zoom guests in between the calls and in between our segments. And apologize, sometimes we need to uh, interrupt those conversations in order that I can talk with you, Ratanji. Um, but I'm, I'm going to actually build a little bit on, on one of the things that we just heard, and that is that you say it's simple. You say, you know, we just have to fire the CEO, fire the 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 human being CEO, human body CEO, and, and replace it with the divine, the awareness of the divine force within us. You know, you make that sound so easy, but it isn't easy. I mean, let's, maybe it is for you, okay? Because you're, you've elevated your, your existence to some place that most of us aren't, almost all of us aren't. But the reality is that this is a pretty, significant, a very significant change of how we operate. At the point of being redundant, from what I said earlier, it's it's just so easy to dwell in the past. It's so easy to reflect on the woulda, shoulda, couldas, and on those moments of greatness. It's just It's just what we go to. And as we get older, there's more of those to go to. So it's so easy to live there. And it's so it's so much a part of our existence to to worry about the future, to to dream about it or to be concerned about it, not only for us, but for our loved ones and and for the world. And then we're barraged by media and politics and news and and wars and and you know, incorrect, improper, terrible things that are going on. It's just so easy to be able to fall back and living in the past or living in the future and grasping this idea of being in the moment. It's so powerful. It it's it's so perfect, but you have to admit it's not easy. It is something that is going to have to be a habit that we cultivate. And what I think you've done a great job of today, Ratanjit, is telling us it's worth it. It's worth it to cultivate that habit. It's worth it to work on living in the moment. But it isn't easy. Well, you know, it's that easy or difficult when when somebody says it's oh, it's difficult. It's it's so your mind is going to say, oh, oh, it's very difficult. You are, so you have to tell your mind to allow it to try that, that this is not that difficult or mind is never going to try it. You know, you've given a story so many times of the person who couldn't give up smoking. And the doctor said, you're going to die. And he says, yeah, I'm going to die. It's okay. And then when he had the little baby, the little grandchild, and that motivated him because of the sickness that he was bringing to that child, that changed it. So it is, what is the reward? What What is it worth it? I mean, I think as humans, we constantly are evaluating. You know, first of the year, a lot of people go on diets and they say, you know, if I do lose 20 pounds, if I do lose 40 pounds, I will probably live longer. I will probably have less health issues and I will be able to, to do the things that I want to do. My back won't hurt. My knee won't hurt. I'll be able to, to live a, a better life. We're constantly evaluating, you know, for something that's difficult, is it worth it if I do this? I think you have laid out incredibly well that this is worth it, that that living in the moment gives us acceptance, gives us gratefulness, allows us to be everything that we were meant to be. 
everything that that God intended to be when we were created and and went through our life to create this beautiful mosaic. It leads me to the question, though, is of fate, of destiny. How much of that, if we give, if we give up our, I don't mean to give up, I guess I do, give up ourselves because we realize that our CEO is, is the, the divine force. So we're kind of giving up ourselves in that process. We're getting a whole lot more, but we're giving up our, ourselves. Is destiny a huge part of that? Is it, is it just along the sidelines running with us or or does that really, when we make this move of living in the moment, does that take over? You know, all, all these religions and all these scriptures often use the term that without God's will, nothing nothing can change, nothing happens, right? Right. But the God right. is within you. The divine force is God within you. And once you hand over the charge to the divine force, you can change your destiny. If we, you remain in charge with your ego, with your greed, with your fear, with your body mode, yeah, you are basically not going to change anything, but you are basically going to live your destiny. Now, the thing is, you, you, you said how to do this, this, we want to leave this, we have very limited time. <clears throat> now, the first thing is that we are, we are convinced that these are benefits. And we are also know the fact that we live by our habits, not by the knowledge. Change our habits. We have now the habit of living in the body mode. We can change our habit of living in the oneness mode, in the spiritual mode. So this exercise, if you do that repeatedly until this habit becomes firm and you continue that, even the habit becomes firm. So do you don't want to leave. And that thing is looking that divine force into your eyes every morning. And you bow to it. You do mental exercise to conceive the power of the divine force. You see the goodness of the divine force. And until the gratefulness comes from your heart to the divine force, you don't finish the exercise. And when you do that exercise every single day, this becomes a habit. And you begin to see others not as brother, sister, white, black, male, female, or any of those things, but you see them as the divine force residing in them. So you have the incentive to serve them incentive to add value to them. So that automatically would happen. It doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't happen in two days. And you or one of our listeners have mentioned that uh, it is essential to have a guru. And you can also have a guide to guide you through that. But you can also do it by yourself. So our self-commitment and willpower is going to be challenged. Where if somebody else is helping you, naturally the reinforcement and the willpower would be greater. Ray? All right, Ratanji, with that, we have to close it up. Thank you for, for being concise there with that how-to. And we want to wish everybody who is with us in real time a wonderful, happy new year, a, a blessed healthy, wonderful, living in the moment new year. And before we leave, we want to uh, wish uh, my radio colleague, my radio host, and my dear spiritual brother a happy birthday because he is celebrating his birthday of his human body 
today. His divine body lives forever, but his human body is having a birthday. So we are blessed with you, Ratanjit, and thank you, thank you. for thank sharing you. your love with us for your whole lifetime. Thank you. And remember, everybody, we're all playing the same game. Have a great day. Happy New Year. We'll talk to you again real soon. All right. We opened our microphones. Our, and let's hear some comments. All right. Yep. Fire away, everybody. You are now. It's your show. It's You're in charge. You're in charge. I think that the hard part is... Uh, how to get from here to there, you know, uh, Rakesh said about a guru. Uh, so obviously, uh, guru is a shortcut. Uh, you can do it by yourself, but uh, I think guru will uh, shorten the time span. Well, naturally, if somebody sure has already achieved this and they, they know the path and they will be able to guide, guide you better. Right. So it's, but, but, uh, it, if you don't have the right guru, it can also, <laughs> if that guru is uh, basically run by the body mode, body mode. you are you are uh, basically a victim of that. Yeah, there are many pseudo gurus, as we all know, yeah. you know, from our times in India. So, yeah, that is the that is the real. You know, we have to be very careful. Uh, but, you know, we have a long tradition in India. You know, th these things were set up, you know, for a reason. You know, they're very well thought out traditions. You know, and, and the, the Bharat has been the spiritual guru of the world forever. It still is. And, you know, the reason why people like Beatles and, and the founder of, uh, uh, what was that, uh, big tech guru who died early. My God, I forget his name. Uh, you know, they, they, they all went to India. There are many other people, not just them, to, to find these kinds of, you know, knowledge, self-realization, um, you know, despite uh, all the other, you know, like lack of all the physical, you know, amenities that, you know, that India has had for years. The things are changing now. People always flock there for that reason. Yeah, I think the, uh, the the living in the moment and uh, I think it involves, as I uh, heard you about, Vaisab, is the idea of surrendering the ego and surrendering control. And um, that is really hard. Uh, this idea that, uh, you know, in, 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 in the Bible, there is this line, thy will be done. Uh, this this is a really hard stuff. But um, somebody said that uh, how how do you get uh, in, to be in the top one percent in in anything, whether it's swimming or math or anything? And the person said the the look at it this way: the the top one percent people do what the ninety nine percent are either unwilling or unable to do. So, so this this prize is is really a big prize, and um, so it is going to take time and effort and commitment. Uh, but I think we we do see the difference in in the in the physical lives of people who live this way, and they have a certain undefinable calmness with them and. Uh, and and their and their life is good also, and and they face adversity with calmness, and they face uh, success with calmness, and we 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 see, see these people. It's rare, but we see them. I mean, Bhaisab is like that. So uh, the the prize is great. So obviously, prize is great. The effort required is great. You know, it's one one thing which. Uh, it's a very delicate difference between uh, somebody decided to give up everything, give up ego and give up this and give up all that. And we have thousands of people who have given up everything and become sadhu. So if you look minutely, that is the highest ego. 
when you do not have anything, how can you give up? Clever. Good point. So fundamentally, when realization tells you that you don't have anything, this is all related to the human body mode. Once you get into the oneness mode, obviously you own nothing. You, you re This realization of you own nothing is what you want to get to. You don't want to give up anything. Realization and giving up, there are two things. One is ego-based, one is egoless. Right. You, you cannot give up something that is not yours to begin with. Yes. Right. We Dylan, haven't heard from... I want to hear something from you. Gosh, yeah. you have been quiet. Dylan and, and yes. And well, others I'm, that I, haven't spoken yet today. Yeah, I'm just absorbing. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to the others. But uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying the conversation. So I'm purely an observer. You finally you, you came to know how crazy <laughs> Baisab Uncle is, huh? No, you remember I was I was on many of these during during COVID when we yes. were we were here. And um, you know, it made a profound difference in the way I viewed the world after participating in these sessions. So I appreciate being here. You can still uh, participate. If I may go back to the question that we had posed earlier. So what are the steps? You want to break it down and, you know, like uh, easily understandable steps to get there. You know, I have come up with something just listening to you guys and, you know, would love to get your feedback. So the number one step is obviously the realization of who you are, you know, where we come yes. from, number one. Number second will be acceptance. You have to accept it too, because that's where a lot of people have difficulty. You know, uh, they they have enough evidence to realize that, but they don't accept it. You know, that's unconditional acceptance of it. The third will be, be grateful that that's what's going on. And the last one will be to enjoy it then, because if you're grateful, you will enjoy it. So that I just came up with that just now. You know, basically, uh, there is a difference between uh, the what world calls as happiness and the inner joy. Happiness has a very narrow window. Happiness is experienced by five senses. If you are starved to death and the food is available to you and you go on this smorgasbord and you, you can have anything you eat and now because you are hungry, you keep on eating and suddenly after a certain time, you have pain in the stomach because you ate too much. So that window is very narrow. If nothing is there, you are in pain and more is there, you are in pain. Whereas the joy happens only when we serve others, when we make a difference in the life of others. Again, the example of Ray uh, reminding us of this guy who was chain smoker. And when he went to the doctors and doctor would always tell him that you are going to kill yourself. Say, Doc, somebody, somebody dies. So... I die, at least I enjoy my life. I enjoy smoking. So suddenly he was gifted with a granddaughter. And every time he would go to, to see the granddaughter, she would have an asthma attack. So doctor finally told him that you cannot go near her until you quit smoking. So he finally quit smoking. For others... So the joy is experienced by doing something to others. But when you are in the ego mode, you collect trophies and medals. If you have sent a, a greeting, greeting card or thank you card to somebody and somebody doesn't respond and your ego is hurt, 
gosh, I send him this, or you send him somebody a big present and you don't get response, your ego is hurt. So you are looking for doing something or others in the ego mode. It's only in the oneness mode the true joy is experienced. So my my story is to there there was a a big attorney who was uh, in downtown in a meeting and he always won his cases and that case was difficult and he had to compromise and he was very not very happy and and then also he was getting late to his daughter's birthday by the time he got out of uh, the meeting it was 8:30 9 9 o'clock in in winter time and he was very highly dejected and disappointed and suddenly he was crossing the road to get his to his uh, car in the driveway in the in the parking garage and uh, he was waiting for the car to pass and suddenly a shadow of the man wanted to go on the road as the impulses, he stopped him. Hey, guy, you are, don't you see the car? You're going to kill yourself? And suddenly, this guy took out a chit from his pocket. And the chit says that this person cannot see, cannot hear, cannot talk. But once in a while, he gets out of his house. And when if you find him, and please uh, help him get back to his residence, which is the address here. So this guy said, oh, gosh, I don't have time. Where is the police? And suddenly he could not find anybody around him. And he found himself taking that person to his home. And now that person, after reaching the home, could not thank him. He could not talk. He would never recognize him because he did not have eyes. And there was no uh, media or taking pictures. Nobody would give him credit. But then when he was going back to his get his car and he was driving, driving home, he felt amazing joy in his, gosh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm glad I helped this guy. And he, I'm so happy that I, I'm able to help him. Pretty soon a voice came in from within that were you able to help him or was he able to help you? But that is the secret of uh, doing something unconditionally and that is the real joy. And he will remember that instant throughout his life. Ray? Ray? I mean, I've heard I've that heard story. That. You, you, yeah, story. you shared that with us. Yeah, you shared that with us. I'm getting an echo here from somebody. I, I don't. I think that was Sadeeps. There we go. Sadeep? So uh, I've I've heard that before, and it's it's very powerful all the time because I think by human our human nature always looks for uh, some kind of a response. You know our. Our human insecurity goes with our fear of our lifetime, always says anything we do, was it good enough? Was it the right thing? Was it, could I have done it better? Were they pleased? It's very difficult for us to be sustained just by the action itself. We want some kind of a response. And so in that very unusual, very rare situation when you're confronted with somebody who can't see you, can't hear you, can't understand what you're doing. There, there's no connection. It's a, it's another life form that you don't really have any interaction with that we know of. Maybe there is one spiritually. There is, but we aren't aware of that from our human mode. I think it, it makes us realize then that we don't need to have that that affirmation from others. We the goodness of what we do is what it's supposed to be about. And the fact that he was able to help that person 
without that affirmation, without that assurance that, hey, wow, you were wonderful. You you did this for me and you helped me and, and you gave up being home with your daughter and all of these other kind of things. He didn't get that. And he found out he didn't need that. And I think, you know, that's a, it's a real powerful revelation to know that we should do things just because of the fact that they're the right thing to do regardless of the response that it gets, regardless of the acceptance of the world, regardless of the affirmation that says you're brilliant and you're beautiful and you're perfect. You know, that's what we want though. It is really what we, you know, whether we admit it or not, we're looking for that validation of our human movements, our uh, human life. Hi, Sahil, we, we have, this youngster from England uh, with us. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? So did we make any sense or did we confuse you? Absolutely. I mean, I was amazed, uh, to be honest, and uh, I really enjoyed the amazing conversation and so many insightful ideas and the conversations between even the chat members. I'm trying to pick up these ideas so that I can inculcate them within my daily practices and life so that I can have a better mindset and really enhance the way I operate and the way I look at life. So thank you so much for this amazing conversation. And also I'd like to add, uh, I really admire your dedication towards this program, Dada. Like even on your birthday, you're here and you're having, you're, you're able to spread your wisdom to all of us. So really, I applaud you for this and uh, I wish you a very happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, you have any questions or anything? Which you want to? Actually, I did, and it kind of got answered by one of the uh, chat members. But I'd still ask it for your clarity and your opinion. So I think one of the chat members mentioned the process of living in the moment and acceptance as a quadratic equation, and uh, it, it was funny because the way you approach math is you try and simplify all the problems. So you mentioned how you could simplify that entire process by accepting it and then proceed to be grateful and then you can you're on the track to live in the moment so i just wanted to ask because you've reached that amazing position where you've accomplished and you've reached that position where you can feel these things but off. started off what other daily practices or habits that you kind of inculcated like for example um is there any grateful morning exercise that you used to do to be able to reach this position could you share some practices or things that you did? Yeah, basically, basically once once you realize the once you're able to see the divine force within you, gratefulness automatically happens. Correct. And you are overwhelmed with that because suddenly you realize you are not the human body. And what enlivens you is the divine power. You are basically awareness. And <clears throat> once that happens, all these things, acceptance, these things, all everything falls in place. Hold on. <clears throat> uh, may I add a few uh, concrete uh, suggestions yeah, yeah, sure, sure. for the youngster? So... Uh, you know, this This is, again, it's millennia-old traditions, uh, yoga. Yoga in Sanskrit actually means the union of body and soul. And what we're talking about here is really about soul. You know, soul is God, God is soul. You know, I mean, that's the equation. In, that's in every religious faith, uh, you know, uh, uh, tradition. So yoga is something that you can do on a daily basis and the other is meditation which is part of yoga but it's not traditional you know understanding of most people uh, so uh, to, you know meditation and yoga are the two tools which can be utilized right noted thank you so much for uh, this uh, tip i really appreciate it thank you you know when when you when you are doing meditation sitting down your aches and body aches and body, uh, this thing getting tired gets in the way, draws attention. So when you do yoga, you get the body out of that because you provide 
flexibility and the and the oxygen to each part of your body and by in that process you put body to rest in uh, and when you do meditation after yoga your body is out of the way that's how it helps you in unification of oneness interesting Nice, you nice know what also just what also just struck me is in your example again, Rathanjit, of of the man that encountered the deaf, dumb, and blind person. In in a way, that was kind of a a yoga experience because in in some ways he was alone, right? In in some ways he was unable to get that communication from that other person, so that became irrelevant. So he was within himself doing what he felt he needed to do in the moment as if he was almost in a meditative prayer because he was no longer looking for the acceptance of the outside world. He he was within himself doing what he was supposed to do. And in, in, a, in a crazy kind of way, it was almost like, a you know, doing yoga there because everything we do is so reliant on the outside forces. And, and when you do the meditation, you're totally within yourself. Yeah, but the morning exercise is basically the ultimate meditation. Yeah. What I got anybody out else of, have any thoughts you'd like to share? What I got out of that story, it's a beautiful story about the lawyer, is that he was trying to get to his daughter's birthday to be a good father. And this intervening experience made him even a better father for all time to come. For all children. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, if we have no other thoughts, Ratanjit, your birthday show is coming to an end. Well, very, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, the show never ends. <laughs> <laughs> well, Not really, you're right. It, re it really never ends. As long as, as long as Ratanjit is here, we will do a show. That's and that'll be another hundred years. I, I got the greatest gift of my life. All these smiles and all these beautiful people to join 